welcome back to Hackcode. In this video, we'll be solving the little problem while it answers. This is a classic interview question based on stack. We will walk you through the problem statement, approach, a step by step algorithm, flowchart for visualization, and a detailed dry run, and finally, the code implementation and the explanation. Let's get started. So, so the problem statement given a string s containing just these characters, uh, this is just like a open bracket, close bracket, this is the flower braces and the clo uh, close flower braces and this is just a square bracket and close square bracket. So determine if this input string is valid. So an input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So every close bracket has a corresponding uh, open bracket of the same type. So like uh, the base core of this is like if you split at the middle of it, it should be a mirror reflection. That's all. Like ignore all this. Like they they saying all this translate to this one only. So in example one, we see that if we split in the half, uh, exactly the same reflection happens. So for uh, in the sense like we have this uh, type of parenthesis opening and this type of parenthesis closing. So uh, output is true because it's a wild parenthesis. Example two, we have the same right. If we split in the half, we see the mirror reflection right. So the output is true. Example three, uh, there's like the both halves don't match right if split, so it's false. So constraints here, uh, the length of the string uh, is an inclusive range of one to ten power four, and S consists of parentheses only these things. So this is our sample space. So this is the initial code given. Let's dive in. Approach. As you guessed, we can solve this problem using a stack. The main idea is to push open bracket under the stack. For, and for each closing bracket, we'll check if it matches the top of the stack. If it matches, pop the top element from the stack. So if it doesn't match or the stack is empty, the string is invalid. By the end of the string, the stack should be empty if the string is valid. So I'll go to them. So here, firstly, uh, we start with initializing an empty stack and then iterate to each character in the string. So if the character is an open bracket, we push it onto the stack. If the character is a closing bracket, uh, we have to case here. We check if the stack is empty or if the top of the stack doesn't match the corresponding opening bracket. So our next case is if it matches, pop the top element from the stack. And after iteration, we check if the stack is empty. If it is, the string is valid, otherwise it's not. So let's look into the flowchart here. So here we start by inserting the stack and then uh, we have this check here, right? Uh, is character an opening bracket? If S, what we do is we push onto the stack. And then uh, after that, we check if it's the end of the string. If no, we continue to the loop. And then here, uh, if the case where uh, the character is not an opening bracket, uh, we do like check if the stack is empty or top doesn't match. If top doesn't match, then it's an invalid string. And then uh, if, if it matches, we pop uh, from the stack and then we check if it's the end of the string. If no, we repeat. And then if S, uh, we check if the stack is empty. So if stack is empty, it means a valid parenthesis or valid string. If it is no, it's invalid. So let's try in the example string. This is the string we have. So firstly, we start with inserting the empty stack. So let's represent the stack using this plain text here. And next thing we do the iteration, right? So here uh, for iteration, we uh, we go from the like the first element in the string to the last element. So the first element in the string is this one flower open flower braces. So we push onto the stack, and then uh, we see the character this one uh, the open square bracket. So that also we push onto the stack, and the next character we see is this uh, open bracket. So that also we push onto the stack. So and then here now we encounter the character uh, the closing bracket. So for this closing bracket, we don't push under the stack, rather we pop from the stack and we check it. So when we pop from the stack, what we have is this character. But this character we have, let's say comparison here is from this one, pop the element which is pop on the stack is equals to the character which we encounter, this one. Yes, it matches. So till now the stack is valid, right? So yeah, we process the next iteration now. So next iteration also we have this closing uh, square bracket. So we pop the top of the stack. Now we do compare. Uh, so, so here, uh, these two matches, right? So till now the stack is valid. So we proceed further. And now we pop it again. So we have this only uh, this element in the stack and then we encounter the closing floor bracket. So this is matches the, uh, with the closing floor bracket. So 
till now the stack is valid now the stack is empty uh, we got completed the iteration now so we check if the stack is empty here so since the stack is empty this is the valid parenthesis or the valid string we can say so we didn't true so as let's run the core explanation so they have given this class solution and then they just declared this is valid method so we started from the stack here so we initialized an empty stack and then uh, we declared a bracket map. This is the map for uh, holding the closing brackets to the uh, opening brackets. So here uh, we see here the um, key for the map is the closing brackets and the values is the opening brackets. So after that we try to the each character in the string. So if the character is an opening bracket, uh, like uh, we're getting the opening bracket from this one. So bracket map dot values essentially gives this opening brackets only, right? So that's why. Uh, in this case, we append the character to the stack. So other case, like where if the character is in the bracket number dot keys. So what are keys here? The closing brackets. So if it is a closing bracket, uh, firstly, we should check if the stack is empty. If the stack is empty, that means that this is the extra character. Uh, like we don't have the corresponding or the uh, symmetric, the opening bracket before. So in that case, we return false. Or in the other case, where the bracket map of character. What is the bracket map of character? So here, so essentially this is in the keys. So let's assume we have this bracket. So the bracket map of character is uh, that gives this this one. So this is not equal to the current whatever stack dot pop. That is current whatever the opening bracket. It means that uh, it is not symmetric. So weird and false. So in other case, uh, we just straight and false because like we don't have this uh, like this is just like safer. This would never happen. They said that uh, we we have the only the sample space is just like these uh, set of strings only. Uh, so just for the safer side, okay, this, this case would never happen. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, at the end, we just check if the stack is, uh, empty. So if the stack is empty, this means that we have the proper symmetric thing opening and bra closing bracket. Uh, if it is not, that means that we have left to do something else, uh, in the stack. So that means that it's not a bad balances. So that's why we written false that taking care by this check. So that's one of the complex analysis. So here the time complex is O of n, where n is the length of the string. Uh, we trade to the string one, so it's O of n. So the space complexity is O of n, where n is the length of the string. So in the worst case, uh, we stored all the opening brackets in the stack. That's why it's O of n. So demo in conclusion. I got the code ready. So let's try retrieving that. So yeah, we got the code retrieved. So let's try summarizing this. So yeah, it beats 87.97%, almost 88% of the best solution. So conclusion. So using a stack-based approach efficiently checks for the validity of the parenthesis by ensuring matching pairs in the correct order. So this method is both time efficient and space efficient, making it a robust solution for this problem. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Hackcode. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more coding tutorials and problem-solving tips. If you have any questions or solutions for the future topics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, happy coding.